everybody. Madam Court Reporter, thank you for joining. Uh, please, as you join in, if you hear my voice the last time I spoke and I came on broadcasting, I understand that my volume was not high enough. So if you do hear what I'm saying, please do me a favor right now. Let me know. Tap, 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 and let me know that you hear my voice. My name is Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock. Princess, because I was born and raised in the southwestern region of Nigeria, where my family has ruled since the 1280s. Hey, welcome. Hello, blessings to you. You can hear me. Awesome. Please, as you come in, please, can you just, I want us to have some conversation tonight. I want to have some conversation tonight. Please tap, tap, tap share this. I have not been here in a minute. A whole lot of stuff has been going on in my life, which I would intend to share some as we, as I begin to find my way back um, to Periscope. I have not been on Periscope for a while because I've just been busy. Some of you who are following me on Facebook, we find out that uh, we recently launched our, uh, I think it's my 26, 25, 26. Thank you for sharing a book called Fearless Visionary, Tear the Veil, where I had the opportunity to bring uh, together 18 women who are all, every one of them now, our first number one best-selling author uh, because of that project. And because of that project, Fearless Visionary, Tear the Veil, the, the project has, has actually become something bigger than I expected. Is your welcome? Thank you for inviting your followers. It's become something bigger than we anticipate, and we've been traveling all over the world to launch the book. Uh, so I want to seize the opportunity to just say congratulations to all of my fearless, fearless visionaries. Uh, people who have been asking me from all over the world, when am I going to start the next uh, volume? My goodness, this first volume is a lot of work. So. <laughs> I'm still kind of, I'm resting on that one. Um, here is, here is a, just a little thing before we go into conversation that has happened since the Fearless Visionaries. If you have not gotten a chance to take a look at the book, please look at Amazon. Or you can go on the community, to our community on Facebook called Fearless Visionaries Community. Of course, you can also go on fearlessvisionaries.com where you will find the trailer. It is super duper awesome i mean when you talk about awesome sauce it has been awesome sauce people tell me well princess how have you been able to bring all these women together and we're still together one year later and we're still pushing the very first thing that we did because here's the thing a lot of people applied to become part of the fearless visionary but i i felt like i needed to go by what the spirit said the cool thing about it is that it's not a spiritual platform but of course, we're spiritually conscious because many of you know that I'm a born again Christian. So I ain't going to lie about that. I'm a minister of God. So I ain't going to lie about that too. So I love the Lord and I ain't going to lie about that. But God allowed me to go and live in Saudi Arabia for a year where I met just beautiful Muslim sisters. And, and Fearless Visionary is comp comprised of Christians, Muslims, and it's just incredible to see all these women become, I mean, number one best-selling author. The very first place that we went to was the UN, United Nations in uh, in New York. Now, one of the fearless visionaries was the one who instrumented that and we got to launch at the United Nations. And of course, we were able to launch at Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. Then we went to uh, University of East London in London, where they hosted us to do uh, um, an event there. Some of these events you'll find on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and of course on our website. It's just been cool. And then we come back to the US where we got a chance to do a big lunch in Atlanta. Now, that was just incredible. And of course, since then, right? Of course, since then, we've gotten a chance to go to uh, the Illinois a chance to go to, oh my goodness, I can't even think straight right now. And just last week, we were in Dubai, launching, oh my goodness, launching and 
the sisters got a chance to be on the platform that was and, and one of the sisters was instrumental in making that happen too. All of these sisters were strategically placed. And because it was strategically placed, you know, we can't be duplicated. Can I say that again? If you are a child of God hearing me right now, can you just tap, I cannot be duplicated. Can we just say that here? I, I, put your name there, cannot and will not, never, never, be duplicated. And this is what I need for us as you hear me tonight. I want you to know wherever you are all over the world, I do not care who wants to who wants to copycat you. I don't care where they think they come from. Say I cannot be duplicated because that's right. You cannot be duplicated because here's the thing. The DNA that got placed in you, it was strategically placed. Can I say that again? It was strategically placed. And one thing that I've noticed on social media is there are too many copycats on social media. People no longer want to use their brain for nothing. They just want to sit back, watch other people sweat, and then they scoop it, scoop in and do it. And now, here's the thing. If they even did it good, that would have been great. They do it and they mess the whole dog on scene up and mess it up for everybody else. But one thing that I know is fearless visionary can never be duplicated because there is an anointing, there's a special anointing, a mantle that God has placed upon fearless visionary that even allows Muslims to come under it and, and, and just blossom under it too. So if you are not a part, if you're thinking to yourself you have a story that you'd like to share, if you know that Perhaps you might be one of the ones that you want to be considered for the next, uh, the next fearless visionary. Go to Facebook, join the community, and then post there. I'd like to be considered. Now, there's no guarantee that you'll be a part of it because everything that I do in my life, I pray over, and whatever God tells me to do, that's what I do. And this is why Fearless Visionary has been incredibly successful, even more than some traditional publishers. Fearless Visionary has been successful. And it's just amazing to see all of my women that have sat on, on stories that have not been told before, on traumatic stories, to watch them move from trauma to victory, to, from trauma to recovery. It's just been incredible. You have one person that was gang raped by eight men, and now she's, I mean, and this is an engineer. You have someone that was raped by the uncle, got pregnant, impregnated, and the, the, the pregnancy got terminated. That's somebody. You got a teen, a teenage lover that, that was facing a bullet, you know, and how the bullet didn't hit her, that's another story. I mean, and then you got one that got kidnapped in India and brought to America, you know, I mean, got kicked down, placed in a sack of rice. I mean, stories like that are empowering. Stories like that. Tonight, if you are feeling down, tonight, if you're saying to yourself, where am I trying so hard? And yet, it feels like I'm not getting anywhere. I want you to go into Fearless Visionary, uh, Fearless Visionary's community on Facebook, scroll all the way down, and begin to just eat from these women's stories to see how they have literally moved from victory, I mean, from trauma to victory. And it's just amazing. And for myself too, I have the privilege to actually announce because I have not been here for a while that I'm now one of the very first cohort of Johnson and Johnson Nurse Innovation Fellowship. I mean, that in itself is is just crazy. And last week I got flown out to New Jersey to meet others where we did nurse hacking. It's just incredible. God is not a respecter of people. Can I say that again? God is not a respecter of what you might be going through. He's not a respecter. Whatever he promises you, know this. He is not man that he will lie. If you are a Muslim watching me now, because I know that my Muslim brothers and sisters that I that I that I that I've come to love and adore, that are in UK, 
that are in Dubai, that are in Saudi, Bahrain, all of you, I say salam leku to you right now. And I say, you know, I am so grateful that while I was there, you guys loved on me. I mean, you loved on me regardless. You knew what I was about. You did not stop me from preaching. You did not stop me from teaching. And I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And so if you're here watching by replay, I say salam alaikum to you. Thank you so much, Runa Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just loving on me while I was living with you guys. And do you know that I, while I was there, the same TED Talk that I was not able to get on, please do share as a comment. Share because I think that this will inspire somebody Put it on your Twitter. Put it on Facebook. Let somebody hear something tonight because you just don't know what you might hear tonight that's going to make a difference, complete difference in your life. And do you know that I always dreamt to be a TED Talk speaker? And so when I was here, I said, wait a minute, Princess of Zambobia, you've done so much in America and not a doggone one person can, can even nominate you. What's up with that? But I left it alone. I, I backed up from it. I left it alone and I took my journey to Saudi Arabia. Now, would you know, I want you to think about this. You're not seeing my face right now. Just imagine this. Saudi Arabia where women wear abaya, right? Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> where Saudi Arabia is a 2,000% is a Muslim. 2,000% Muslim, if there's anything like that. Do you know that right there, someone nominated me and I became the very first person, man, woman, black, African, black, African, American, any, to get on Al Angel National Schools in Saudi Arabia as the very first. Now, this is what God will do. Here come an African girl. Here come a Christian. Here comes somebody who is just experienced Saudi. And they put her on TED Talk in Saudi Arabia. This is the possibility of intention. What can happen in your life? So you cannot be duplicated. So having said that, I wanted to discuss something tonight. And then I'm just going to hop off. And if you look at my title, my title is goes something like this, that um, taking action, right? Taking action or speaking out of season, can it cost you your birthright? <laughs> I, I want us, as you, as you hear that, I want us to think about that. And if there's any comment that you want to give, please, I want to hear it too. I want to hear that comment too. Taking action or speaking out of season, can it cost you your birthright? And why, why, why this topic? I have really, for the last few days, it's just a topic that just came in my heart as I began to think about how the holiday season is coming the things that I want to see change in my life as we move into 2020, the 2020 vision, vision. And this was something, I, I, I read a story, which I want, uh, a story about a young lady that I really love. I mean, really love. Frankly, the young lady almost became my uh, sister-in-law, <laughs> which I would have loved, but uh, that's another story, right? And I began to, to just sit on it and began to pray and say, God, what went wrong? What went wrong? Do you understand that we, you know, is one thing to fight for justice, but it's another to also know the season and the time to do it. And, and, and for me, particularly, who is a minister of God, I always, when I hear a message like that, that seems like people might not agree with, I always say, God, give me a scripture to back it up. Give me a scripture to back it up. And one of the scriptures that God gave me was Vashti. Vashti and Queen Esther. Now, here's the thing. Vashti 
got tired of the king parading her, right? She was one that when the king had people come to the palace, oh, bring Vashti because she was the most beautiful in the kingdom, and they will bring her and the king will parade her. Well, girlfriend got fed up with it. Now, was that wrong? No. It wasn't wrong for her to be fed up, to be used as a pawn in front of all these men, right? Parading her like this. Frankly, if I was in her shoes, I'd be fed up myself too, right? But here is the thing. She acted at the wrong time, right? She acted out of season. She reacted out of season. And God showed me how because she reacted out of season, she handed over a birthright to Queen Esther. Hey, somebody had better hear me tonight. Somebody had better hear me tonight. As you watch this by replay, I want you to hear this. I hear it brilliantly. Vashti, let me say that again. Go and read in the scripture. Just go to Google and put Vashti and Queen Esther and they will come up. Vashti, there was nothing wrong with how Vashti felt. There was absolutely nothing. In fact, if I was in that shoe, I would do the same thing because nobody can be parading me like that in front of all these powerful men. I get fed up, right? But the thing was, she reacted out of season. And because she reacted out of season, welcome, welcome. Because she reacted out of season, she handed over her birthright to Queen Esther. Now, while she was reacting, Queen Esther was being brilliant. She was listening to mentorship. She was waiting her turn. She was praying. She was trusting. She wasn't. She was in the council of many people. She wasn't by herself saying, I got something to prove. She wasn't doing that. She knew that she needed the she needed to have a specific and a unique approach. And the approach, it would take more than just herself and her beauty to make that happen. So while Vashti was reacting, right? <laughs> Queen Esther was acting. Vashti was reacting. The Queen Esther was acting according to the according to the mentorship that she was getting. So here's the deal. Because we are right doesn't mean that we should not be careful when we take action or when we move. There are times platforms are there when you are placed on a platform, you need to take your time to understand the platform. You need to take the time to understand the procedure, the policies, everything that rules that platform. You cannot, because you are so, 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 get on the platform and then start going against everything and stand and think that you cannot lose your birthright. Many of us right now, we have lost our birthright because we believe we're focused, too focused on causes, that causes are not wrong. But we also, because we are born again Christians, and because we believe in God, we need to learn when to speak and when to be quiet. The Toronto says that there's a time and a place for everything on the face of this earth. Here's the deal. When Oprah first started, what happened? Oprah wasn't saying much. He, she was listening to the people that came on her show. She was allowing those people to say whatever they needed to say, right? And she was just there, just moving the direction, moving the communication. But where Oprah is today, she can say things, and it don't matter if people, right, agree with her or not because it is her platform. She can do whatever she wants to do on her platform. But when we are invited onto a platform, when we are invited, there are certain rules and regulations that we are given. If we, if we take our pen and we sign saying, I agree to abide by it, then we must absolutely or unequivocally adhere to that platform. Otherwise, we become people that can no longer be trusted. Yes, we might have a cause that is right. Yes, yes, we might have a cause that is just. But it's also important for us 
that we also have to learn how to contain ourselves and learn when to speak, when to take action, and just when to be still. Because frankly, let me tell you something. If you are planted on a platform, God has a plan for it, right? But if left for us to, to now take our time with that platform or wherever it is, to take our time to understand things, to build ourselves within that platform to the place where we are now able to have freedom to say whatever it is that we need to say. So I don't know who I'm sharing this with. And frankly, it doesn't really matter if anybody agrees with me. But what I know is that the word of God says there's a time and place for everything, right? There's a time and place for everything. Even Jesus, right? When he was placed on this earth, he had time and moments where he was teaching, where he was not released. I remember when he went to the uh, to a wedding in Canaan and they said, oh, there's no more wine. People were pushing her, him to say something. What did he say? He said, uh-uh. My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come, right? He said, my time has not yet come. Now, why would he say that? Why would he say that? When he says, my time has not yet come. So this is what I would like to share. When you are placed, I mean, this has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with anybody's emotions. It just has to do with the word of God. What does the word of God say there? Yes, we have to stand by justice. Yes, we have to stand by truth. But guess what? We also have to understand that God will grant us the ability and the time and the space so that we do not burn ourselves out before the time when we are able to now say whatever it is that God has placed in our heart to say. So I hope as you listen to this today, that begin to think in your life, what are the things that I may have bulged up because I spoke too soon or because I took action too soon. But guess what? He's also giving us an opportunity to do it all over again. He's giving us an opportunity to do it all, all over again. Will you do it the right way this time? Whatever it is, whatever platform that you'll find yourself, you want to be trustworthy. You do not want to be someone that people will now be afraid to put on the platform because they don't know what will come out of your mouth because you feel you have something to say, all right? So it's important because here's the thing. It's easy for us to be blacklisted in, uh, in, in, in Hollywood, in, in the media, in all kinds of places, even in churches. Some people are blacklisted because they cannot be trusted with what comes out of their mouth. I remember when we were all preparing to go to Dubai a few weeks ago, um, Sister Wendy Alexander, one of the number one best-selling author in that book, who kind of put together the, uh, the event for Dubai, had a moment. And he, she had a discussion with all the ladies that were going and said, here are the protocols when you go to Dubai. These are the things that you do. These are the things that you cannot do. These are the things. I can say I need permission to be able to take your picture I need permission for this. Can you sign this? Well, of course, we all signed at the dotted line. When we took our pen and signed, what we essentially say is that we will abide by what you say because that is a platform that you have provided us. If we go there and do whatever, the shame is going to be on Wendy Alexander. If we start going, when we went to uh, Dubai and we start doing things out of order, out of things that he had, she had already said do not happen in the Arab world. Guess what? Guess what? She's never going to invite you to that platform again. Not only is she never going to do that, she's going to make sure that other people, if they come and seek review, she's going to make sure that they do not put you on there and she will be right in doing that. So as we move along, and prepare for 2020 vision. It is important that we clean our own vision. Understand that God will open doors and platforms in our life. We must understand that as the platforms are being opened, they're not for us not to be
and understanding, trying to figure out when we could try to, to everything under the face of this earth. So we must also understand that regardless, because I put you, I put you on my platform, don't give you the right to say whatever without permission. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be my head on the road, right? It's going to be my head. Understand, just like I said, I, I shared with people that several years ago, I took a lot of people to Africa to work in Africa. They promised heaven and earth and all kind of stuff that nobody asked them to promise. And they didn't do one of it. And now, right, 10, 15 years later, I'm still bearing the brunch of what they did. This is what happens when people bring you on their platform. You've got to learn to respect people's platform. I don't care what kind of causes you have to do. You've got to learn to respect people's platform, period. Because what happens is when you do not respect it, what happens now is that the, the, the platform that God is trying to develop in and through you, the cause, which is mostly actually correct and right, right? You know, it usually is a cause that's right, now becomes diluted, and now there's a lot of distraction away from the cause and the message. Now the distraction, you have become a distraction to the message that you're trying to say. I hope that makes sense to somebody. So until next time, be inspired, be motivated, be of sentimental value. Know that you are the hero in your own life story. My name is Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock. I'm a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, doctor of nurse practice. Of course, I'm a Johnson & Johnson Nurse Innovation Fellow, uh, a TED Talk speaker, a best-selling author, an award-winning filmmaker, and of course, I'm a friend at large. God bless you now. Bye-bye.